on to the next, we get to the parathyroid glands. These guys pair very well with the thyroid. So, you know, we'll, we'll try to kind of talk about their relationship, but we'll talk about chief cells and what they do when it comes to low calcium and how PTH comes into play with that. We'll talk about PTH and calcitonin working together to maintain calcium um, blood levels. And then we'll talk about what happens when your PTH is off. So where are these parathyroid glands? Um, the parathyroids, remember para means next to, near, right? Um, so the parathyroid glands, as the name implies, are near or next to the thyroid. And in this case, right, when we say next to or near, we mean they are literally hanging out right on the backside of that thyroid. So here's the front, here's the anterior view. Here on the left, we see the thyroid. And then if we were to flip this around and kind of remove the trachea and whatnot. So remember that there are structures that are normally like right here that we have cut away. If we look at the posterior view, we see these four little, almost like corn kernels, is how they kind of appear in this picture. Um, these four little tiny glands, these are the parathyroid glands, all four of them together. Um, and so they're hanging out on the backside of the thyroid and they have what are we call chief cells or principal cells that will help sense the calcium levels as well in the blood. Um, they will work on the opposite. Remember the thyroid is going to produce calcitonin when calcium in the blood is too high. Parathyroid glands are going to detect low blood calcium. And when that blood calcium level is low, they have a hormone aptly named parathyroid hormone or PTH for short to help bring those calcium levels up. So let's talk about it. So parathyroid hormone or PTH, I'm just gonna say PTH from here on out, is going to help regulate cal calcium as well as phosphate levels in the blood. It's going to increase your calcium levels in your blood. It's gonna lower your phosphate levels. And how does, so like, let's talk about how it does this. Um, it's going to increase your osteoclast activity. Basically, it's going to help you kind of break bone down to release that calcium from the bone matrix. It's also going to tell your kidneys to retain, reabsorb that calcium as well as magnesium from the urine. So don't put calcium in the urine, keep it, reabsorb it. Um, we're going to promote the formation of calcitriol, which is vitamin D. This is going to help you absorb calcium from your small intestines. So your small intestines they can absorb calcium, but really vitamin D kind of helps with that. And so vitamin D, you know, we're gonna promote the formation of that vitamin D so that we can absorb calcium. So if you notice, if you were paying attention to the last video where we talked about calcitonin and what calcitonin does, everything PTH does is the almost the exact opposite of what calcitonin does. So if you know one, you know the other, basically. Right, that, that's how we, we work these two together for balance. So these two are going to work opposite of each other through negative feedback loops to help us maintain homeostasis of the blood calcium levels. So we take a look at, at this picture here, we walk through it. Here's calcium levels are too high, right? We're gonna start here. It's way too high. Thyroid gland releases calcitonin Calcitonin then is going to, you know, it's going to tell the kidneys to excrete calcium. It's going to help stop the small intestines from absorbing calcium from the foods we eat. And it's going to tell the bones, hey, absorb this calcium, build up more bone, right? Blood calcium levels fall in response to all those actions. Maybe for whatever reason, they've gone too low now. Parathyroid glands kick on because the calcium levels are too low parathyroid glands release PTH. PTH then is going to help synthesize vitamin D so that we can absorb calcium from the food we eat. It's gonna tell the kidneys to absorb, you know, reabsorb calcium before excreting it out. And it's going to help break, it's gonna signal bone to break down a little bit so that we can pull calcium from the bones. And then we bring that blood calcium level back up. And we're just going through this balance, right? It's like oh, this one, so like last time I was talking about how stocking the shelves, we get to a certain point and then that our negative feedback loop is we've stocked the shelves, they're fully stocked, we stop production. This one here with these two hormones is more like a seesaw or a teeter-totter. 
we're trying to maintain balance in the middle. We don't want either end to go up or down too much. We want to keep it kind of midline. And so these two are helping us kind of do this balancing act. If we swing too far to the right, right, we can kind of move ourselves, shift our weight to the left so that we get more center again. And that's how these two are kind of playing out. Now what can go wrong? <laughs> so there's a couple things that can go wrong. We have hypoparathyroidism where we have too little PTH being um, released. Remember that the parathyroid gland is going to release that PTH to help um, increase your blood calcium level. So when it's not there, blood calcium level has dropped down too far. This has a whole like list of different things, but basically what happens is when you have hypoparathyroidism, you end up with hypocalcemia, which is like too low of calcium in the blood. So this will lead to things like muscle tetany where you're, you, have, you have muscle twitches, you have um, cramps, pains, um, things of that nature. So you'd have issues with muscles because muscles require calcium. We'll talk more about that. Uh, when we get to muscles themselves of how calcium plays a role in that. And then with hyperparathyroidism, there's too much, right? This is where we are increasing the blood calcium levels too high. Um, we end up pulling a lot of calcium from the bone. So you get osteitis fibrosis cystica. This is where we basically are, are pulling calcium from the blood in high amounts. So you would have problems with your bones, right? Lesions, pain, things of that nature associated with the bones.